Okay, here's an experiment which we're looking to investigate Newton's second law, or, in other words, whether f equals ma. It's quite an easy experiment. It makes use of a trolley, and we're looking at what type of force that's exerted along this piece of string, which is attached to the pulley at the far end, um, what type of force there, let me just draw that a little bit better for you, and it's attached to a pulley, and that's attached uh, to a weight. So what type of force along here, F, um, and the mass of the trolley results in what type of acceleration? So that's simply how we're doing it. We're just going to let this run through some light gates. It's look at the acceleration, and we're going to vary the force exerted or the on this piece of string to see how the mass accelerates. Let me uh, slowly um, explain. Let me explain that a little bit further, better. We have um, there is our table, and there is our mass, and we have some weights hanging on the end. The weights here, of course, are generated by themselves having some mass, and so therefore the weight is going to the mass times g. This is quite an interesting idea because now we're dealing with A-level study, or when we're dealing with A-level study, the mass that's accelerating is not just this mass here, but it's the entire mass of the system. So really what I should be writing down here is F resultant, because we're looking at the resultant force, which means that's... Uh, the tension here minus any frictional forces, and I'll show you how we'll deal with that later. So the resultant force is going to equal to the mass of the slider plus the mass in which we're using to accelerate it times A. I'll show you the masses that we're using on this side. We have, in effect, about 60 grams worth of weights. <clears throat> Good, so let's look at this is um so let's call this EXP1. This is the first experiment. And what we're going to be looking for is we're going to look for how we are going to vary the accelerating masses. So we're looking to change the mass, I'll call it small m in kilograms. So there's my independent variable. And we're looking um, at what the acceleration is in meters per second squared. Once, twice, three times, and an average. And so there is my table of results. And that's what we're going to be investigating. We're going to look at how this mass here, the accelerating mass or the accelerating force, uh, changes the acceleration. So probably it's worth making another column which looks at the force in Newtons, which is very simply just mg. <clears throat> Good. How are we going to do this? So that's a simple setup. Um, how are we going to go about this? Well, first of all, we're going to make use of a light gate and this control box here. And as I turn this light gate on, uh, these, um, uh, this control box here needs setting up. I'll show you how that's done. What we're looking to do is the computer is looking to time how long it takes for this part of the wood to pass through that light gate. As it obstructs the light gate, to then letting the light gate go through again, it can time. It knows the distance. We're going to input the distance here, and it knows the time, so therefore it can work out the velocity of this piece. It then does exactly the same for the velocity of this piece here. So we have a change in velocity. I'll just draw this in large. We know this is five centimeters, and it will work out the time one. It will also work out the time two, and it knows that this is five centimeters. So suddenly the velocity here, <clears throat> which is going to be five divided by T1, it does in its inside the electronics, 
V2, depending which way round it makes, it doesn't really make a difference, will be T, sorry, T2 and T1. <clears throat> and then one of the things is it knows the time difference between there. So it works out the difference V1 minus V2 divides it by T3 and therefore gives you an acceleration. It does all of that inside the electronics. How do we set that up? Well, you want to select the mode. We're looking for acceleration, D. How many times? We only want one reading, D. Mask size, uh, five centimeters. And then, when we're ready, we press go. And once it's passed through, D. And it will tell us the, the acceleration there. This time it's a deacceleration, which sort of makes sense, I suppose. I just nudged it. <clears throat> Good. So that's that light gate set up. Coming back to the theory here, I mentioned that this is the resultant force, which is, of course, the tension, which is the weight, minus any frictional forces we've got. And what we can do here, of course, is we can try and reduce the frictional forces by introducing a small extra component down the slope, which is a component of the weight. In other words, if I lift this up a bit, that trolley starts to move because its weight has a small component down the track. Now, if I very, very subtly move it with this little bit here, I can try and remove the frictional force by introducing that small weight. And we call that friction compensation. So I can alter this end very slightly. And when I nudge this, <coughs> sorry, when I nudge the car, if it continues to move at a constant velocity, Newton's first law, then I know that I friction compensated. So really what I should do is I should set this up again, go, and see whether if I nudge it slightly, and find D again, it's pretty much got very, very little acceleration, a slight little bit of acceleration. So I'll lift it up a fraction more, and I shall try that again. Nudge it. Whoops, anomaly. <clears throat> Let's try that one again. D. Yes, very little acceleration. So I can pretty much say I friction compensated that. Okay, final point. As I apply these weights onto here, then when I take a weight off, because of course I, I want to change my weights or my masses on this side, if I were to remove one, I would be changing the overall mass of the system. So when I remove one, I need to place it back on the top so the total mass of my system remains the same. So I keep applying, uh, I will probably start from the heaviest weight and then remove one each time and place it back onto here. And I shall do that for all of the weights masses, weights, and look for the accelerations. And I think it's best to start with about 60 grams. Uh, that's what we've discovered, it works well. So 60 grams in kilograms is going to be 0 0.06, and then I move to 0 0.05, etc. And then I'm going to work out what the acceleration is. Let me set that up for the first one. block there for us so I can set it up. Okay, hang the weights. And then reset the block and then I release. Be careful to catch it so it doesn't go flying off the end. D. <clears throat> 
58. Well, that's clearly anomalous. Let's try that again. <clears throat> Be careful about whether they uh, make sense, these readings. One point one nine. That's much better. So one point one nine, and then we carry on. Okay, I'm going to take a pause until I've got all the results. So here are the finished results. Then, I've got the masses, the accelerating masses, the accelerations three times, the average, and then the force. And of course, the force is determined by thing F equals the mass times. G, that's how we move from one side um, to the other side. Good, now what are we going to do with these results? Well, we said in the first instance that we think that the resultant force, and we know the resultant force is just the weight because we friction compensated, is equal to the total accelerating mass of the system multiplied by A. <clears throat> so I'm going to start working out what the total accelerating mass of the system is using these results. How am I going to do that? Well, I'm going to start, I'm going to plot a graph in which I have my independent variable along the bottom, and the independent was what I changed, the weight or the mass, so that would be the force, and this is going to be my acceleration in meters per second squared. And what I should have coming out, when you plot, you'll notice that it should be a nice straight line. Why? Well, we say F equals MA, and I just need to make sure I keep that in the theory. I want to find the equation of a straight line, Y equals MX plus C. So if I rearrange the equation, that because my A is my Y, that gives me A equals it's going to be 1 over m plus m times f plus 0. <clears throat> In other words, this is my y, my x is f, and my gradient m is 1 over m plus m, and it's going through the origin. So if I worked out the gradient of my line, the gradient should be 1 over m plus m. Uh, therefore, <clears throat> what I suggest that you do is you take this plus accelerating mass and everything and you weigh it and see whether it's equal to 1 over your gradient. Super. So I hope that makes sense. And how you're going to sort this out, you're looking obviously to achieve a relationship and test this theory out here. You've got the results to do it. Um, so hit pause and take a look at those. And therefore you know what to plot and what to achieve from it. Super. Okay, here is an experiment looking at F equals MA and how we test this theory. But we're gonna call this one experiment number two. There's an experiment one that you can see on a previous video. In essence, what we have is we have a trolley on a track that's being driven uh, by some weight to cause an acceleration. And if you look at video one, it'll explain um, uh, how we reduce, how we remove the um, necessary friction, and also how we can rearrange this to being M plus big M A. In other words, it's not just this trolley we're interested in, it's the entire acceler accelerating mass, which includes these as well. Okay, experiment one changed the force and looked at how the acceleration varied. This one, we're going to change the mass whilst keeping the force constant and therefore see how the acceleration varies. So what we're looking to do is change the mass of the system in kilograms, and I put that as big M. We're looking to work out the acceleration in meters a second squared once, twice, three times in an average. And then we're going to leave space for a last column, which is one over the acceleration in meters to the minus one seconds to the minus two. And I'm going to show you in the theory why that is 
um, in a minute. Essentially, um, I've explained how these light gates work. Um, I think something like 60 grams, which creates approximately 0 0.06 newtons, should be used as the accelerating um, as the accelerating force. Is that right? 60, 0 0.6, apologies. 0 0.6 newtons should be the um, weight accelerator, which is used to accelerate the object. And then what you're going to do is you're going to change the masses by placing these weights on, which are 500 grams. And you'll notice that its movement with one of them on, with another one on, it's decreasing. It's considerably decreasing. So what we hopefully will appreciate, and from the theory we can as well, the mass is inversely proportional to the acceleration. Hence the need for this last column here. Okay, we're going to take the results. Um, if you're interested in how this works, look at video number one. And if you're interested in how we use this to determine how f much it's accelerating, look at video one. Otherwise, I'm just going to collect together. Well, I have actually collected the results. The second part. So one I did earlier. I changed the masses. Um, 0.5 kilograms is the actual trolley weight of the trolley itself. And each one of these is an extra half a, half a kilogram. The 0.5 is that accelerating mass that I used at the far end. Good, so if you want to just copy those results down ready to plot a graph, feel free to do so. Otherwise, I'll go through the theory of what we're going to plot against what. Good, right. So we're going to plot this time the independent variable, which was the mass. But this time I'm going to do um, I'm going to do yeah, big mass in kilograms, and then I'm going to plot one over the acceleration in meters, the minus one seconds, the minus two. And what I should get is a nice straight line, and I explain why. F equals M plus M A. I'm going to rearrange this to give myself, um, I need to put X as this and that as Y. So if I did 1 over A equals, so I've moved that, I've divided through by that, and that gives me 1 over F by M plus M which is my big mass in effect. So 1 over A is 1 over F by M dash, my big mass. Okay, Y equals MX plus C. If I plot 1 over A on my Y, which I've done, and I plot the M plus M on my X axis, then my gradient should be 1 over F and my intercept should be 0. So the gradient here should be 1 over f, which is the driving force I used, which is about 0. Point, well, in this case, it was actually 0. 0.05 of a kilo. So it's approximately 0. 0.5 newtons, approximately, for my results. So I hope that theory makes sense and how we can predict straight line. Of course, if I did just acceleration, against mass, we'd see an inverse proportional graph. The inverse proportionality can be proved by plotting 1 over the acceleration against m. Right, hope that makes sense.